All right, here we are in the workshop. So we have the XXL LCD panel from Printed Solid. And I've printed the um, enclosure for the LCD panel. And I wanted to go over a couple of things here. Um, when you follow the link from Printed Solid, it will take you to probably the wrong file. So you need to look at the remix section. If you have the auto bed leveling Robo 3D R1 Plus, you need this one that's got the cutout. And that's for the for the bed rails or for the bed to clear. <coughs> so what you want to do is once you get it printed, you'll notice that there are some hex nut prints. So that you can actually bolt this thing in the hole and I don't think that the three millimeter is really going to go through there very well if it did I don't like how tightening it down can squeeze this circuit board together so I'm not going to use that and I'll show you why let's put the camera down here see if I can adjust the camera all right I think that's pretty good so what happens is when you put this in the case it fits so well it doesn't move around that once you put this one together that there's really no need for those extra screws it'll hold itself together just fine <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is only use these perimeter screws one two three and four this is an addition that they didn't have on some of the earlier prints and the case wouldn't stay together at the top so I like this the only problem is trying to find a screw that goes in there that's long enough. Let's see if I can back this up a little bit forward for you. What I'm going to use is stainless steel pan head Phillips screws. You can order the M3 by .05 but it's really not needed. These screws will work just fine if you modify the depth on this one right here so that's what we're going to try to do today also the screw that comes out of the side of the Robo 3D printer this is an M6 by 1.0 by what looks to be probably 15 16 millimeter let's let's try it out here it is 16 millimeter long so what I found is a connecting screw at Home Depot from Everbuilt. The number is 605-992. So it's an M6530. They have these in brown and white. I chose white because the Robo 3D is white. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drill this hole out and the top hole so that when everything, when it's all done, you'll have, let's take this out of the bag, you have a nice flat screw that matches the printer. We need to drill this hole out. Now, I printed this on low quality, so there may be some infill inside there that's gonna really cause a problem when I go to drill this. So we'll just see. I mean, worst case, I can uh, I can print another one, and I can change the infill so that whenever I sink this down, it will be okay. Now the reason I'm doing that, is I'll show you right quick. So we take our screws here and get one out of the pack. So if I just put one through. through here
I measured that and that's sticking through a half of an inch. Okay, so if you take the same screw and put it through this hole, it only sticks through a quarter of an inch. Okay. So the obvious thing is, well, you get a longer screw. When you go to the home center, this is as long as you can get in a number four screw. You can't get a three quarter, a one inch would be perfect, but you can't get that in the number four. You can order the M3 screws on eBay, but we don't want to wait, we want to do it today. So I'm going to go over here to the drill press and let's see if we can successfully drill this. Now, I don't, I'm going to have to try to find a way to set the camera up here. This is not the best view for you guys, but uh, let's go for it. So now, let's just go for it. Can you see that real good? Oh yeah. Okay, that fits really good and tight in there. Get a few screws out. So the MDF is to keep the actual rotor encoder from laying them straight on the table. Oh, that's great. There we go. Alright, so we got everything modded, so now uh, it's time to put everything in the case. So I went on ahead and I decided to drill the case, if you can see that hole right there. And in the shop, you saw where we modified the nut and then the bolts. So that's ready to go back together. So your existing SD card reader has to go. Take the harness, put it in our toolbox. All right. So here's our piece that's modded. This is the hole that I was telling you that needs to go that way, probably a quarter of an inch, just because it's so tight in the case. You've probably got three quarters of an inch to the ramps board, so we're okay with that. All right, so we'll put our first piece in.
I'll just stick this through the top and I'll show you the top and then I'll show you the inside where the nut is. Okay, there's the top nut. Let's see if we can turn it and see how close the bed is. But it clears just fine. Okay, we'll turn it around. Alright, and there's where we're going to put our nut. Alright, we got that there. Right, so now let's plug our harness up. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Cables can move. So let's plug the fan in and put the back on. Okay, so that's it, the complete install. The little uh, feet risers weren't needed uh, for this table that it sits on, but I'd already printed them a long time ago anyway. So here is our SD card slot that's original to the machine, which will now be a card storage. And uh, here's the buttons. And I'll link all the screws and buttons and everything that I bought from Home Depot in the description below. So you guys can grab that. So everything is here. Let's flip it on. And there you go. Now that I've got the camera in the hand, I'll show you. see plenty of room right on top of that. There's probably 60 to 80 thou or 2 millimeters above that clearance wise. So right before I close the video out we're going to do the very last task that needs to be done. There you go. Thanks for watching.